Life throws a lot at us. Worries about health, tough emotions, and dreams that feel out of reach. Sometimes it feels like everything's telling us to just stop trying, especially when we're waiting for something good to happen. But there's one thing we really need to hold on to. Never giving up. In those hard times, it's super important to stay strong and keep going. Believing that there's a reason for everything can help us see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's okay to have bad days. They're part of the journey to becoming our best selves. Great things take time, and the challenges we face today are just steps on the path to where we're meant to be. Beloved, God is using this video to send you this message. Trust in God can elevate you to where your heart desires. Why? Because God wants the best outcome for your life. The difficult times are times of trouble, struggle, and happiness. Undergoing tough times often involves some kind of loss. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the loss of your home, dealing with the effects of the economic meltdown, struggling with your health or any other life challenges. Permit me to say that although we seldom pray for challenges, difficult times are inevitable. During hard times, we face trials, temptations, and tribulations. Yet in all these, we are constantly reminded that the Lord never leaves us. Giving in to emotional pain or distress can mess with your mental health and our joy, causing us to worry and feel anxious. This can turn into a significant issue down the road. Plus, giving up can make you stray from God's plan for your life. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The story of Job teaches us an important lesson. If some of us went through what this man went through, we may even curse God and then give up on following him, relinquishing God's plan for our lives. Job was upright and prosperous. He had wealth, health, and even a loving family. Do you know that God wanted to prove Job's absolute faith and trust in him to the devil? So he allowed Satan to attack him. As a result of this, Job lost everything, including his children, servants, and cattle. And just one day, a wind of calamity blew over Job's family and possessions, and he lost everything in the blink of an eye. Dear beloved, what would you have done if you were Job? Would you be quick to question or even accuse God of being unjust and wicked to you? But that was not the case for Job. He knew who he was and whom he served. He also knew that everything happens for a reason. He held dear to his faith and refused to say anything negative about God. Instead, he shaved his head and worshiped God. He said these words in Job, chapter 1, verse 21. He says, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. This powerful Bible verse teaches us something pretty straightforward. We're born with nothing, and we leave with nothing. Everything in between, the good stuff and the not so good, is part of life. Sometimes we get things, sometimes we lose them, but no matter what happens, it's good to be thankful and keep a positive spirit. It's about saying thanks for the good times and still finding a reason to be grateful when times are tough. It's a reminder to appreciate what we have when we have it, knowing that it's all part of a bigger plan we might not understand yet. 
What a man of faith Job is. Even in his agony, pain, and sickness, he worshipped God. He was struck with a wave of challenges and had every reason to complain and curse God. Yet, he did not despair, even when his wife told him to curse God and, and die. He did not yield. Dear child of God, do you know, in this life journey, that people you feel are closest to you, maybe the ones who discourage you the most? Your closest friend may suggest easier ways out of your situation that contradict what God has prepared for your miracle. It may appear like a loving gesture, but the plan is against your destiny, avoiding the path God wants you to follow. This is just like Job's friends came to him, as if to encourage him but truly came to accuse him and question his integrity. Like Job, there may be times when people close to us blame us for sudden tragedies or issues we didn't cause. They make you feel like you didn't do enough to avert the crises, even when you know you tried your best. They attack your efforts and your conscience, and this can result in guilt discouraging you. However, here is what you should know about all of this. God often allows you to experience the setbacks and the accompanying disappointment to bring you to your lowest and shape you for the great height he has reserved for you. It is surprising to see that when things become difficult, people put more effort into worrying and dwelling solely on those challenges than recognizing that we need to turn to God and trust Him instead of giving up. Amid his predicament, Job prayed to God for help, and he answered him. Instead of worrying about these issues, why not lay them before God in prayer? According to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, the Bible says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The scripture is telling us here that we shouldn't let our worries take over. Instead of fretting, we should talk to God about what's bugging us and not forget to say, thanks for the good stuff he's already done for us. When we do this, we get to experience a special kind of peace that's really hard to explain, but it's super calming and protects our hearts and thoughts, especially when things get tough. It's like being wrapped in a warm blanket of calmness knowing that everything's going to be okay because we're not alone in what we're going through. Why does the Bible recommend that you pray? When you place your needs before God in prayer, that act of faith takes your mind away from the challenges. It helps strengthen your faith in God. Prayer enables you to elevate God over the mountain of challenges before you. Your approach to God in prayer must come from a sincere heart. One of the most critical moments in the story of Job was when God spoke to him through the whirlwind, revealing his almighty power and divine wisdom. For Job's faith, God restored all his blessings and fortunes twofold. Job's story teaches us to maintain unwavering faith in our difficult moments, even if we can't comprehend what is happening and the reason behind our suffering. God expects us not to give up. We must steadfastly hold on to our faith and trust in God's wisdom. The book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, So, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. God's wisdom is a powerful tool for our resilience. 
faith, endurance, and trust in Him. Today, doing good, working hard, and pursuing your passions can be difficult, especially when it involves staying in the will of God. Sometimes you feel like your effort is at yielding success. However, just like that verse said, to not give up and to trust God with unwavering faith, you will have testimonies if you follow through. I have good news for you today. Do not give up or quit on God because He is in control of your life and isn't done with you yet. The same God who heals the sick and raises the dead will hear your cry and bring solutions to every difficulty in your life. Our God is the God of yesterday, today and forever. He is always ready to respond to us by offering a solution to our challenges. Our God is the Almighty. He lives and cares for us. That is why He always sends His angels to protect us. Through prayer, you develop a trusting relationship with God. Over time, you also learn to recognize His voice as He speaks to you. The Bible clearly shows Him choosing to act in response to the prayers of His people. Praying will build your faith and help you to keep your eyes focused on the Lord, even in times of crises. Another way to strengthen our faith through difficult times is by studying and meditating on God's Word. The Word of God renews our minds to help us focus. The Scripture reveals to us in Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. God can speak to us through several means, just as he is doing through this video right now. The more you engage your mind in God's words, the less you worry about the difficulties in the world. When we read, study, and meditate on God's word, we consistently find ourselves amazed at how God does things. He comes to heal the broken. He rescues the weak and strengthens them. He confounds the wise. He loves his enemies and provides them with a way to escape the judgment coming upon them for their wicked ways. He is the embodiment of wisdom, love, and power. The Word of God strengthens our faith and trust in Him. It gives hope and assurance that sustains us in the day of adversity. An example is seen in the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, who went back to her town to testify, leading many Samaritans to believe in Jesus. According to John, chapter 4, verse 39, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. A woman from Samaria met Jesus, and he knew her life story without her having to say much. When she went back to her village and told everyone about her encounter, many people started to believe in Jesus just because of her story. It shows that when we talk about the big changes in our lives, especially those that touch our hearts deeply, it can inspire others to believe and find hope. It's like when you share a personal story that really means something to you, and suddenly, your friends start seeing things differently too. The Bible tells us that numerous Samaritans believed her because they could tell she had encountered something powerful. That was the power of the Word of God she had received from Jesus. The Word of God gives assurance and hope to a path of divine purpose. Lastly, seek support from believers in the faith. Their encouragement and counseling can keep you going. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do 
but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Feeling loved and included by others is a natural desire we all have. We want the love, security and fellowship from a genuine connection to others. We want people we can call day or night when we need to talk. We want someone to go to the mall or market with or to sit with in church. We want godly friends to encourage us in our faith and to be someone God can use to speak through into our lives. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We were created to be in unity with one another, to support one another, and to bring one another's burdens. So when we find ourselves isolated, excluded, and alone, we can feel rejected and unworthy of love. We are made for relationships. These relationships are meant to be a blessing to us. In addition to our abundant relationship with Christ, we must first learn to be satisfied by the love of God. Then we can have genuine loving relationships with others, where we give and serve and expect nothing in return. Also, take some time to intentionally pray about bringing new people into your life. Ask God to bring encouraging friends who will love you like Jesus and will point you to Jesus. Ask him to guide you to meaningful places and to guide you the people to connect with. God uses faithful believers to help us in times of hardships and brokenness. They bring us to a place of trust in God. These believers make you feel the loving hands of Jesus close by. Beloved, God loves you and wants the best for you. Do not quit until you win. Call on him because there are things he will do for you. Trust God and never give up. With God by your side, you can face the biggest problems. Remember, his strength becomes your shield and his wisdom lights your path. God's love for you is endless and his plans are greater than any challenge you face. So hold tight to his hand, for with every step you take together, victory becomes not just a possibility, but a certainty.